Hi everybody, welcome back to the Feynman Technique. Today we're going to be uh, deriving uh, the general solution to that integral um, and then using that general solution to solve one of my favorite integrals on this channel. All right, let's get started. First of all, let's, uh, let's call this a function of A and we'll hold B constant. So B is an arbitrary constant and A is our variable now. Okay, let's take uh, F prime of A using the Leibniz rule for differentiation under the integral sign. This will be equal to the integral from zero to one of the partial with respect to A of the integrand, which will simply be X to the A. And that is equal to one over A plus one. Well, if, that's, if this is F prime of A, then we can see that F of A is going to be equal to the natural log of a plus one plus c. And notice that I did not put that in uh, absolute values. Um, that's because there are very few restrictions on a and b. We'll, we'll get to that later, but there's actually only two restrictions um, uh, on a and b. Uh, it will converge uh, for all other values of a and b um, you know, regardless of whether they are real, imaginary, or just complex. Um, so this is actually for A and B in the complex numbers. Okay. So anyway, there's our F of A. It's equal to the natural log of A plus 1 plus C. All right. Well, how are we going to get rid of that plus C? Let's plug in a value for B. Uh, for f of a that we can obviously know, that we will know the answer to that integral. We'll know what the answer is. If we plug in a is equal to b, that thing goes to zero. In other words, f of b is equal to zero. So f of b is equal to zero, and it's also equal to this evaluated at b. So that's equal to the natural log of b plus one plus C. And all this implies that C is equal to negative natural log B plus 1. So our C is negative natural log B plus 1. We'll use the properties of logarithms to combine that into one natural logarithm like this. A plus 1 over B plus 1. All right. And now the restrictions on A and B become fairly obvious. Um, the restriction is, well, we can't take the natural log of zero, and we can't take the natural log of infinity, but we can take the natural log of any other number, real or imaginary. So the restrictions are A and B not equal to negative one, and that's it. Um, we don't want A to be negative one, because then we take natural log zero, and that diverges to infinity. And we don't want to take the natural log of, well, first of all, we don't want division by zero. Um, so B cannot be equal to negative one. So A and B not equal to negative one. Everything else is good. Um, okay, so that's it. That's our formula. Uh, this is equal to this. And I'll just write that over here in all its glory. 0 to 1 of x to the a minus x to the b over natural log x dx is equal to the natural log of a plus 1 over b plus 1 with the obvious restrictions. All right, and now I'm going to erase everything else. Well, you know what, I'll put... Uh, I'll put right here, A and B exist in the complex numbers not equal to negative one. Okay, yeah, so that should do it. That should be true. Correct me in the comments if I'm wrong or if there's something I forgot, but I'm pretty sure that's correct. All right, so now we're going to use that to solve my favorite integral, the integral that got me into Feynman integration in the first place. 
that is the integral from zero to infinity of sine x over x dx. And I've solved this more ways on this channel. Um, this will probably be the fifth way I've, I've solved this particular integral on this channel using Feynman integration or some form of it. All right, well, how are we gonna get that into this form? We will use sine x is equal to e to the i x minus e to the negative i x over 2i. And um, we'll actually write it like this. We're going to write it as e to the x all to the i and e to the x all to the negative i. Now it might start becoming clear what I'm going to do or how I'm going to use that formula to get the answer. All right. So using this, we have this. This is equal to 1 over 2i times the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the x all raised to the i power minus e to the x all raised to the negative i power over x dx. And now we will let... Uh, x equals natural log u, dx equals 1 over u du, giving us, and we'll call this i, giving us i is equal to, well, let's see, x is the natural log of u, so infinity is the natural log of infinity, but 0 is the natural log of 1. Sine, uh, well, sine x, well, no, we're, we're not using this. We're not using that one. We're using this one. And we have uh, e to the x is equal to u. This implies that e to the x equals u. So we just have u to the i minus u to the negative i all over x, which is natural log u, times dx, which is 1 over u du. And then we'll let w equal 1 over u, implying that du is equal to negative 1 over w squared dw. Okay, uh, so this means i is now equal to, let's see, 1 over infinity is 0, 1 over 1 is 1. This u to the i will switch to u to the negative i minus u to the i over 1 over u, I'm sorry, this should be w. Yeah, there we go. Um, 1 over w, this will be over 1 over w, or we'll just put w up here. And then natural log 1 over w is negative natural log w. And our du is negative 1 over w squared DW, excuse me one minute. All right, sorry about that. I thought I heard my dog uh, getting into something he shouldn't. This is negative I. Okay. Um, that's not minus 1 over W squared. That's times negative 1 over W squared. All right, um, I believe that's everything I needed to do. Yeah, we switched that, we switched that. This went up to the top. This became a negative natural log W. We switched the bounds, we substituted for DU. All right, that negative cancels this negative. We're actually going to switch our bounds and introduce a negative sign. We'll multiply this by negative one, that will just be, uh, basically we would have this minus this now. So w to the i minus w to the negative i. Um, that w cancels one of those. We have a w on the bottom. Let's see, this is dw. 
let's get rid of these parentheses and let me rewrite this a little bit more legibly. This is w to the i minus w to the negative i. All right, well, this is a w to the negative one, so we'll just take one away for every one of those w's. And now we have it. Okay, now we have it, uh, except for um, this is 1 over 2i, and this is 1 over 2i. We can't forget that part. All right. So now we have this form. So this is going to be equal to 1 over 2i times the natural log of our a in this case is i minus 1, so we get i minus 1 plus 1 over our b is minus i minus 1, minus i minus 1, and then again plus 1, and that's it. Minus 1 plus 1 cancels, minus 1 plus 1 cancels. We are left with just uh, the natural log of negative 1. Um, I over negative I is just negative 1. So we have natural log of negative 1. Well, negative 1 is famously equal to e to the i pi. So we'll write that in there. e to the i pi. Natural log and e cancel. We're just left with i pi. Cancel, cancel is equal to pi over 2, just like we expected. And there you go. I believe that's my fifth different method for solving that integral using Feynman integration. Hope you enjoyed that.